Hello Alias Nation and welcome to my next Alias Modeling Tutorial, The Sight Mirror Part 1. Something strange happening in here. It looks like scan geometry has been sliced. I think we will ignore this and patch this out later. The bottom portion is also interesting. We have negativity here, the blue and purple area. Here it looks like we also need a proper size round. At the bottom we probably need one consistent surface. I think we will build a couple of blends running from the top right across the geometry to the bottom. Looking at the mirror scan from the front, we will create a surface plane to anchor our perimeter geometry onto and we will use this plane to create a couple of other offset planes to define the width of the chamfer and the plastic trim frame. Together, we are going to have three reference planes. Here, we have a circular gap between components for horizontal adjustment. We will find a pivot point and separate our support component that the mirror is sitting on into the stationary and rotary parts. Let's create a reference plane through our scan. I like to help myself with a curve. I project this curve onto our scan and investigate how this projected curve looks like and adjust our master curve if needed. Now, let's delete this curve on scan. Create another curve to have three points. Then I can create a construction plane using three points option. When the plane is ready and selected, pick set plane. Observe the cube. So basically now, the plane we just created has become our working plane. Let's use this plane to create a curve. Go to the top view and project the curve onto our scan. Now we can begin reconstruction of our curves. Grab a curve tool and create just a 2 degree simple curve. Comb curvature shows that our curve lacks acceleration. To gain more lead in, let's add more CVs and slide. Pay attention to the arrow you select. If you choose left arrow, you slide along the left axis and vice versa. 
In this situation, the left arrow will add volume and the right arrow will make our curve flatter. I work with this curve having it slightly offset because I know that the projected curve is on top of a round. But we don't build rounds at this stage of the reconstruction. So we need to take this into account as we only create sharp edges. Let's move to the creation of blend curves. The blend curves look really not too bad. They are also offset from our scan curves. We also have a good acceleration comb. If it needs to be improved, just tweak your CVs. Try to achieve curvature peak towards the center of blend curves. Here, for example, let's just play with the curve a bit more to get a smooth transition. Remember that geometry should be your priority and you don't always have to stay 100% true to the scan. Let's create our first patch. But first, we need curves. I am creating the first curve. Let's attach our curve to the end of the blend. Project on the scan, add CVs and sculpt. Move center CV towards the end, because I know I need more curvature here, as there is a visible bump at the back. We have a basic, constant comb, and I think we need to add more CVs. Alright, so I have made a 6 degrees curve. I made this curve kind of curvy to follow our outer profile here, just to keep our geometry more integrated. So the next is our curve on the other side. I skipped the process of creating this curve as I don't want to make this video too long. Let's compare the curve to our scan. Here is where our first patch ends and the transition blend connects. Take a guess where our last curve is going to be. We will close the four-sided perimeter with this bottom curve. But again, because we have a round here, our curve is not going to be sitting exactly on the scan, but will be offset. Our last curve looks like so. It is hovering in the air. Cone curvature shows some acceleration from top and rear views. Um, actually, we need some acceleration for the adjacent curves. On the left side, we could do with even some more acceleration. We would probably need some more CVs to achieve this. Ok, let's go ahead and build our first patch. Let's create a square. I can see some position failures around the perimeter. So let's go ahead and see what is happening. I think we can turn off the explicit control and don't manipulate the number of CVs. You see these holes turning in? This is the effect we are after. But our surface is too flat in the middle, we need to push it out manually. I moved the CVs out and even added more to have more control. I believe the patch is now 6x6 and we are very close to the scan. Some of the CVs could be polished better if I'm honest. Zebra looks like so, which is very close to what we want. Once we have this done, I think we can go ahead and start creating a curve on this side. We are creating the side surface. I already have this curve sketched previously and this curve just roughly placed in space. I can create a monorail surface. Now I begin to realize that in fact I don't need that. I can just create a draft surface. From here we can work manually. I use the NUV method to manipulate CVs I add one extra degree to give our surface some crown. This is a lot of work, so I will work on it off-air and show you the final result. Here we have the side patch. Now we are going to create a huge blend that will let us trim away this triangle portion of the patch. Just a quick look at the zebra, which looks very promising. Let's create an anchor edge for our blend. Let's copy and paste this patch and use it to obtain the intersection. 
move pivot point to the corner and rotate to suit us better. To create a blend, let's just use a monorail. We can play with options to see what gives us best results. I think that parallel is best. Let's shorten the surface by extending its one corner backwards. I think that at this stage, I will make our side surface slightly longer and align the edge of the blend to our cos, the curve on surface. Now, if we just duplicate and extend this edge, we could project it onto our side surface and then we could temporarily trim this surface away and align our blend with the edge align option. I know it doesn't look right yet, but don't worry, we are getting there. The last step is to manually slide CVs the way we want them to be. Also, we will still need to play with this edge because we are too far away from this gun, so let's move it in and see what results I can get. Here is the completed surface. By comparing it to the grey scan, you can see how much inboard I had to move it to achieve the right shape. I actually moved it all the way down because I needed to remove a lot of volume in this area. Let's just ask for sections and see how close we are to the scan. And also see the zebra stripes. I think that the result is very good. The last thing to look at is the comb curvature. We have our G2 connection here. Let's create the back surface and adjust it to better match the scan. Let's see the zebra stripes. Stripes looks good and the patch has some acceleration to it. And we know we need a blend starting here because, because of the principal max analysis. I just created this curve using our old method and we are going to create another monorail surface. Turn on the sections. This is a lot of CVs to be honest. Nevertheless, let's just try to adjust them manually. I want to point something out. When you look at the scan, you can see that the blend surface runs diagonally. This will make our patch in progress very narrow at the bottom. So let's shorten the bottom of the patch by extending it backwards. Alright, so we have our patch and I want to show you what curvature comb looks like. By the way, if you want me to slow down and show you more in detail how I got to this point, leave your thoughts in the comments section. You can see how important it is to know how to read the scan and this blend surface is a perfect example. We have this opening to patch out. Let's just create one square surface to start with. And later I will show you how to avoid getting yourself into trouble. So here is our square and CVs of this patch look like this. This is not an ideal situation because we have one edge here and another one here, which sometimes may be tricky and give you bad geometry. So what we can do is detach our square and manually adjust CVs to suit. We want to get close to blend's top edge, then project the edge onto the detached portion and trim away.
Now we can finally move to the bottom part. On the side I created these two pretty straightforward surfaces. During the creation I realized that, in fact, they are very hard to make right. I guess the scan could be more accurate. It is really wobbly in some bottom areas. So without worrying about not being close to our scan, I created two surfaces that are reasonable. I still modify them, I even remove two degrees to lower complexity. I've noticed that I don't have sculptability and control over this patch, so let's go ahead and divide it into three pieces. Now let's make them five degrees, so remove two degrees in each patch and sculpt to suit our scan. This is a good method to gain some more geometry without creating it from scratch. Let's see the zebra stripes. The original zebra does something weird in here, so we can just ignore it. The bottom zebra is surprisingly good. It matches the scan pretty well. From the back view, CVs flow upwards, so we shouldn't have any problems with draft angles during the mold design, as we have some slight inclination. Finally, let's just fix this wobbliness around this intersection. The next bit of geometry we are worrying about is this bottom blend. The blend will run through these two components, which are basically two different parts. This is a stationary support attached to a pillar, and this is a rotary support carrying the mirror. Let's use the blend curve we created in the beginning of this tutorial to be our anchor point for the blend surface. Finally, I projected our circle on the blend and trimmed away. All looks neat and tidy. The last bit of geometry are the chamfers. Let's begin by creating a reference plane that can define the thickness of our chamfers. Grab the existing plane, copy, paste and move the correct distance. Second step is to copy existing edges of our perimeter and offset them inboard. At this stage, consulting our scan is very important. We must make sure we don't go too deep or too shallow. Once the curves are offset, we can move them to our reference plane. Remember to realigning blend curves to make sure you don't lose G2. It is time to create our surfaces. We can use the skin tool with the connect edge option on. Once geometry is created, add a hole, give it some crown and some acceleration if you fancy. Repeat the operation around the perimeter and you will be all set and done. <laughs> 